so this is um Kamala on Central Interview. I think I'm doing this backwards. I did another interview with the same dude as the Hollywood Jimmy. I think it might be backwards, but um I see this because um <clears throat> I don't see too many I know he's <clears throat> been gone for a while, but I don't see too many interviews with Kamala. This is part one. Let's see Let's check this interview out. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jimmy Blaylock and I'm here with one of the most famous wrestlers to ever come out of the state of Mississippi. I'm with James Harris, known all over the world as Kamala the Ugandan Giant. Now I know we've been friends here at the, the last few years and you've told me, you know, horror stories of WWE and things that's been done to you in the past. And you invited me here to your house, here in Mississippi, and you're going to explain some of the things that's in the past, some things that's happened, and some of the things Vince McMahon has done to you personally. And uh, James, uh, thanks for inviting me. Anytime, Jimmy. You know, you always talk to me over the years. When I was in the WWF, I wish I had listened to you. When you told me that I wasn't making any money and you couldn't talk to the man that you're working for, and you're being treated the way that you're treated, I should have left when you told me to. But I just kept thinking and hoping that things would have got better, but they didn't. I remember back when I first met Vince in 1984, he told me that he believed in being honest with everybody, all of his talent, and that I would make money. He told me that he believed in that old saying, what goes around comes around. But you know, I was treated so bad I almost starved to death in the WWF. Mm -hmm. And now I wonder, do we ever think about it now? I wonder, do we still feel that way? I like to start a death affair. But still, he wanted us to go out, wanted me to go out, tell people that I was making a lot of money to make the WWF look good. But what about myself? When I'm hungry, my family hungry, I couldn't hardly send my children to school. Couldn't hardly buy food. And I have this home here, but I wouldn't have had it if I had waited until I got to the WWF. I got to thank Cowboy Bill Watts at Mid-South Sport, who gave me that break to buy me a home. But then, after the home, I have to live afterward. I have a family. Mm. And I was a younger man when I went to the WWF. I was like 34 years old. And I went there not for the joy of it, but a, a mixture of joy and making money so that I could take his, care of my... You said, <clears throat> said he, was in, he was in his 30s. But I seen pictures. Um, He was wrestling before that. Something else. He had um, he had hair back then. Um, But yeah, he went he went there um later on. So... I said, uh, the figures and all that stuff worth all that money. He should have uh, made something because uh, uh, those those figures are worth so much. They said you can uh, uh, set up the man's uh, retirement. Uh, <clears throat> those those figures are worth even not the package. They, like I said in another video, they're worth something. So I don't know these. They, they uh, he didn't make nothing. Then the um, even the one he made in the nineties, <clears throat> that figure's worth something. My family. I didn't do it. I remember so many times, and like I used to tell you when we talked on the phone, that uh, I had to sleep in rental cars, and the mm -hmm. next night I was able to share a room with uh, uh, three of the guys that went with me. And that wasn't a good feeling, no privacy at all. It was bad for a guy like me in the WWF. I worked hard, and I earned this spot, but never pay off. Never a good payoff. And, and you, I mean, you've worked at Madison Square Garden how many times? At countless times with Hulk Hogan, Madison Square Garden, with uh, Chief J. Strongbow, Pat Patterson, Jake the Snake Rattle, and on the list go on and on and on. And not only there, but all over the United States and all the big buildings, the famous places in the United States. I rest all those guys. And still couldn't afford a hotel room until every other night. 
And, and not only that, you have dolls. See? That's made of you. And oh, that's you know, uh, they make a lot of money. Okay, I thought I thought I thought that was the um. That's still the, the Jazz. That's not the Hasbro. That's the Jazz. That's still, but even though that's the classic Super, so that's still. Of course, I remember those. I didn't have that one, but I had um. Junkyard Dog and uh, Vader and who else? Hogan came in from all. But yeah, that was the Jack specific line. I noticed this video. I think it's what 2010 or 2012. Uh, you have that seal up in the package, however, in mint condition, and <clears throat> things worth something. I know that people like the Hasbro's more now, but still. Of these dolls. And I should say figurines. The people Let me who get that them. back. And not only that, you have dolls. Action figures. Up. And, you know, they make a lot of money off these dolls. Yeah. And I should say figurines, the people who collect them. But they like make a lot, I mean a lot of money off of these. No, figurines and, and, and statues. Tell me the story about what think, kind of yeah. part you got out of this. They first, this is the last one that the WWF, well now WWE made on me. In 1987 was the first one. I never got one dime. And I was sitting there when I used to see guys, they were quarter, some guys getting uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars a quarter. And I never got one dime from the 1987. They said they wasn't selling. So if they wasn't selling, why did they want to go and make another one of them? They made the 92 model. Mm -hmm. I might have got $10,000 total oh, out see, of the 92 model. His, mem his memory is good for that stuff. Because I remember that too. Because he said, um, they had one in the 80s and then they had one in the 90s. And if, but they're both hard to find. But they ain't selling. <clears throat> I don't know I'm about that now. You try to go out there and find one fresh in the package, you know. Cause I remember I think they showed his house <clears throat> a couple years ago. He was still around. Um, he had them both in the um, like a little display case type thing. I guess somebody I don't know if he bought it or somebody somebody probably sent it to him. But yeah, they're hard to find now, especially fresh uh, men in the package. All right, after the ninety two model, then they wanted to make another one. Which is, this is the 2005 The Legend. Mm. I, I agreed to it. She just kept, kept on hoping that things would get better. But they never did. These dolls here, nothing. I might get $200, $150 like that for a quarter off of these dolls right here. And it'll soon fade away. Mm. And I have got as less as $1.92 paycheck from and, and these dolls are in every store you go to, Walmart, they're in, they're in Toys R Us, they're in all the major stores, all, not just here, but all around the world. Yeah, and I understand. You've got... Yeah, that was, um, like I said, 2010 or 2011 or 12, because yeah, that was teaching my Toys R Us, yeah, that was, oh, but yeah, um, they're everywhere, even on the internet, they're everywhere. And the, the, the things ain't selling, I don't believe, I don't believe that now, come on, come on, come on, come on. Screwed majorly. I have autographed them everywhere. Right. Everywhere I go, I've autographed them. But no money. They say they're not selling. Not selling. That's why he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want to become a billionaire or a millionaire by screwing people because it'll come back around again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wish I had listened to you, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, part two. Okay, well, we're going to cut. Or it's going to stop right there. There's one. Um, yeah. They're not selling. But, uh, maybe not to break people, maybe not people that don't pay them no attention, but, like, co um, collector, not just collectors, uh, the wrestling fans. And, 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 and even, even, even the wrestling fan, even, you know, the wrestling fans, um, May not be a collector, but they'll 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 pick up certain you know a couple of figures, especially like the ones from the eighties and nineties. So they're se they're selling all right. What the hell is what the hell is what the hell is going on? People talking about they're selling somewhere. I thought, and I'm sure a lot of the fans out there, and a lot of the people, the workers, the fans, everybody. I thought you were a millionaire. I mean, you know, I mean, you hear Kamala the Ugandan giant. The first thing I think, you know, you had, you, you man, you was everywhere. You, you're all over the internet. 
you're all you got your videos out there. You got your dolls out there. You also had not only you had other Kamala merchandise. I had all type of merchandise, but still no money. And, and uh, I now if they um I don't think they sold it. They might now, but back then I don't think it, back then I don't think it did. If they sold the uh. Uh, the, the face mask, uh, it, it ain't selling. Yeah, right. It's selling now. That's like saying, um, I know it's two different wrestlers. That's like saying, uh, the warrior. Um, kids didn't want to wear the face paint or, or the little warrior masks, or uh, the Vader. Uh, nobody wanted to buy the um, the Vader, the Vader mask. Come on now. That stuff was selling. Um, I can't remember if Kamala had a T-shirt, but like if they, if they, if he made that mask, come on now. I would have picked it up. You know, I say the same thing over and over. They say that my uh, merchandise was not selling. And, you know, it made me think back to when I, the last match, big match that I had in the WWF was with The Undertaker. I had two. The one in uh, England, in the England Arena, about 90,000 people were there. I wasn't in the main event, but I was high up on the card. The Undertaker, who I have a lot of respect for, and that's the only way I would watch wrestling today is if, if, is if The Undertaker is on there. That's the only way. But everybody loves the Undertaker take. deserves every dime. He got one half million dollars. Mm. Not knocking him, because I love the guy. But he deserves every dime. But what about me? I got $13,000. $13,000. Whew! That's terrible. That's Compare that. That's that's sad. Yes, it's can't even get, get a man forty grand. It broke my heart, but I had signed a contract with him for uh, something that none of the other wrestlers had ever done. The contract that I signed it was a contract that I would never leave uh, the WWF until my two years was up. And they gonna take out they took out fifteen percent of my gross, fifteen percent of my gross for two years, and they told me that I would get it back with interest. Mm. They put the escrow. They took out fifteen percent of my uh, gross every week. Every After week. two years, you can't guess how much that was with interest. Seventeen thousand mm. dollars for two years. Right. So that let you know that I didn't make any money. Mm. I have the contract. I still have the contract right now. I have it framed. Right. Well, you know, I mean. Uh, this is going to be a shock to a lot of the fans. I, I mean, it's a shock to me because, you know, I've always Seven, kept around with you. you uh, work. I'm not going to say what you do on the side, but I always thought, you know, why do you do that? Because, I mean, I figured, and I'm sure everybody figured out there, you would have enough money to, you know, I mean, look at what you've done. Look at your career. Look where you have been. And you've been there. You've done it. I mean, you've been all around the world and worked all the uh, major places around the world. I did, drew a lot of money, but I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid. Sometime I wonder why, but I was one of the guys that I passed all the drug tests because I don't do drugs and had, had no bad habits. I didn't chase after rats. I didn't do any of it. So I think I'm a pretty sensible man. I mean, I, I, I'm not a well-educated man, but I'm a sensible man. If I had made money, I would have money today because uh, I don't have any bad habits. Right, right. But I just didn't make the money. Right. Mm. So well, that's why, excuse me, but that's why I do, I don't mind telling people. I'm a truck driver, I drive a truck. Mm. And I don't do it just uh, 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 for a hobby. I do it, I mean, I love driving a truck, but I have to do something to make a living because money. I don't have any money. Right. What does other people tell you when they find out that Kamala, the Uganda job, is driving a truck? I mean, are they are the same way that I have felt and over the years? Yes. A, a lot of them will tell me that, uh, you know, you don't have to drive a truck. You, think, you must love driving a truck. I say, yeah, I love driving a truck. But I don't go into details and tell them why. But they think I do it for a hobby. But I do it for a living. Mm. When I shouldn't have to. Unless in, uh, it, it was just my choice. Right. If Vince McMahon was standing over there, what would you say to him right now? I would say, Mr. McMahon, you're a liar, you're a cheater, you're a racist, mm. 
and I would like to issue a challenge to you. I still got a little fight left in there, but I mean real fight. A real fight. I mean, I don't mean that fakey stuff that we've been doing all these years. Not that. A real fight. I see that you done booked up. Maybe it's your steroid clan. But I don't have to have it. I issue a challenge to you anytime, anywhere. You let me know. You know how to get a hold of me. Hmm. Let me know. And I want to fight you. And I want to fight you for real. And if you whoop my butt, I will get down on my knees and shake your hand. And I would say, you're the man. You're the best. You keep my butt. And I would do it on national TV. How about that? No, I know about that. Are you man enough? <laughs> Are you a man? Show your, show your fans. Show your That'd fans. That would be something, boy. That would have been something. You're a man. I'm willing to do it. You? Oh, that's something there. Yeah. How about that? <clears throat> Somali, he's <clears throat> he seemed real, real friendly, but he see <clears throat> he got a he got a mean and nasty side. On the other part, I was uh, he was talking about um, well not the other video, some three or four parts. He was talking about uh, Andre uh, getting a little too rough, and he was <laughs> his man said he he, he had that three fifty seven in the pocket. How about that? Huh? He said don't he said don't do that shit no more. <laughs> he wasn't having it. I guess Andre said Andre wanted to be the only giant because he said he beat the hell out of oh out of, out of John Stud. Woo! And John Stud ain't no small guy. He was six ten. I think um I just said Kamala was six seven. I thought I thought he was maybe six three, six four. I know he was six seven. That's a big dude. That's not small man either. But uh <clears throat> man, should they <clears throat> should have been living <clears throat> living all right back then. So he, had to, he had to get in the road, <clears throat> get on the road, and uh, drive trucks and stuff. It was as good as a truck driver, but he, he should not have to mess with that unless he wanted to do like a side, uh, a, a side whatever. But damn, that is that is messed up, man. What the hell. <clears throat>